And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the second half of March 2024. I'm Jason Parent with the Rooster County Action Program. On this edition of ACAP Today, we're going to talk about the new diaper demonstration program that's happening not only here in Aroostook County, but statewide. We're going to talk to some statewide officials working on implementing this new program that aims to get diapers directly into the hands of those who need the most for their babies. We're gonna talk with also some local folks here in Aroostook County who through ACAP are helping to implement that program right here in the county. We're gonna to get to that in just a minute, but before we do that, we're first gonna to get to the news and information that you can use Again, for this, the second half of March 2024. And in the news and information that you can use, we begin with this. This is a very challenging time for folks who are seeking heating assistance. The Home Energy Assistance Program officially closed down as of March 1st, and ACAP is no longer able to take any additional HEAP applications. We can maintain a waiting list in the event that any additional dollars would free up. However, at this point, that is not looking likely. Uh, we can say that in February, our staff did double up on appointments and move schedules to try to get all of those who were scheduled in March and beyond into the calendar in February. So we thank our staff for doing that. In addition to that, we are running extremely low on donation dollars at this time. So individuals who are not eligible for the Home Energy Assistance Program, uh, there aren't much resources available right now. Thankfully, some warmer weather um, has been helping uh, that situation, but we just wanted to alert folks of this because it is not a typical situation for us to not have access to this program at this time. There continues to be emergency funds for those who are already enrolled in the Home Energy Assistance Program. So if you do find yourself in an emergency, uh, please do give us a call. Uh, we can see what we can do uh, to assist you in that particular situation. But just wanted to give you all a heads up of this current situation. We move on from heating now to employment, and we're going to talk about the uh, county's largest job fair, which is coming up uh, right here on March 28th, and that's at the Northern Maine Community College. It is uh, the county's largest job fair. Uh, there will be uh, employers from across Aroostook County and beyond, uh, and including some national companies uh, on site at NMCC on March 28th. That's a Thursday, and it will be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the gymnasium there at NMCC. If you'd like more information on this career fair, you can contact our partners at NMCC. Cassie Rajeski is the student support career specialist there. You can call her at 768-2793. Moving from jobs to housing, another key issue facing Aroostook County right now, and the hopes to start to tackle how we get additional housing into Aroostook County is the topic of Aroostook County's Housing Development Conference on Friday, March 29th from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the North Eastland Hotel. It will be an informative day for those interested in developing or financing housing projects. Uh, we'll work on processing education from planning to completing the capital stack. A lot of valuable information. You see an all-star lineup there of speakers from across the state of Maine and right here in Aroostook County um, that are all going to speak to this particular topic and hopefully spur some interest in producing new housing stock here in Aroostook County at all levels and of all kinds. That's Aroostook County's Housing Development Conference, Friday, March 29th from 8.30 to 3.30 at the North Eastland Hotel. We're also looking at early childhood education this month and talking about an upcoming event that's happening on Saturday, June 1st. It's a little out there, um, but it is Aroostook County's Early Childhood Conference. ACAP is involved in this one as well as the housing conference. This one will be held at Northern Maine Community College in Presque Isle from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, again, on Saturday, June 1st, 2024. It will specifically focus on flipping the switch on challenging behaviors. If you're working in the early care and education uh, environment right now, you certainly know that challenging behaviors with children have become a critical issue um, in the classroom, especially in the post-pandemic era. So this is a potentially great opportunity for you to uh, con confer with other colleagues in the early childhood field and learn a lot about what might be happening in terms of how we can engage children better uh, to deal with the challenging behaviors that are being exhibited in child care centers across Aroostook County. Now we're talking about the transitional transportation program, transportation being another key challenge to both getting children to child care and certainly uh, households to employment or or head of the households and, and, and families and parents uh, and others into employment. Uh, this program is uh, provided by the state of Maine and it may help pay for work-related travel expenses. Uh, 
individuals across the Rooster County qualify if they're currently working at paid employment, have a work-related travel expense, have a child under the age of 18 in their home, and their income is below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines, which are shown there on your screen before taxes and withholdings. Now, if you have recently closed uh, TANF and your income is below 250% of the federal poverty level before taxes and withholdings, uh, you might also be eligible for this program as well. And you can see there it reimburses up to 46 cents per mile or $20 to $20 per day. Uh, and so you can receive this program under uh, under the trans transitional transportation program for up to 18 months. If you want more information, this is not an ACAP program. We can't help you connect with it, but it's available directly through the Department of Health and Human Services. The toll-free number and the website are there on your screen. We also are announcing that we have early childhood education openings available at our Fort Kent Center. It's rare that at this time of year, there are availabilities in early childhood education, uh, specifically in our Head Start and preschool programs. Head Start openings are open for children age three to five whose family has an income level at or below 100% of poverty guidelines are receiving either TANF, SNAP, SSI, or experiencing homelessness. For more information, you can call 764-3721, extension 224, you can ask questions about the eligibility. Certainly the preschool program has eligible openings beyond just the Head Start guidelines. So we encourage you to give us a call or you can look at the application on the Early Care and Education page of the ACAP website. We are also uh, through our prevention team, letting folks know out there who are looking for resources to help them quit tobacco, that we can help connect you with that. There are several resources, including the main quit link, which offers tools to support individuals when they are ready to quit smoking, baking, or other tobacco. There's the My Life Quit, uh, My Life My Quit, which is designed specifically for teenagers age 13 to 17 and offers supports and resources to those teens in quitting smoking or vaping, which has become uh, a huge concern uh, in the community. And there are ACAP community educators who are also available to help connect individuals to additional quitting resources. Uh, contact us at 764-3721 or prevention at acap-me.org to see how the agency can help and specifically our prevention team. We are also going to share with you that Maine's Workforce Collaborative, we hadn't shared this in a while, but they continue to offer things like employment and training program, informational sessions, interviewing tips and tricks, making career choices, resume cover letter development, job preparation and retention, and navigating job search and hiring process for individuals with a criminal history. These are all workshops that are offered remotely by Maine's Workforce Collaborative, and they're offered on a regular basis. A link to the registration page for that can be found on the Workforce Development page of the ACAP website, and we encourage all folks out there who are in need of assistance in terms of getting into the workforce or looking at upskilling in the workforce to take advantage of these free workshops offered right from the comfort of your own home or desk or wherever you are through Zoom. So again, call, uh, call us or check it out right on our website, I should say, to register for these classes if you have an interest. We are also at the waning days of the tax season, just a little bit left to go here as we end in the first week of April. Uh, this is the free tax preparation offered through the Aroostook Cash Coalition, of which ACAP, New Ventures, Maine, and others are members. If your household income was less than $64,000 in 2023, you do qualify. We have only a limited number of appointments available, and at the time of this recording or at the time of this airing, we may not have any left at all, but we really want to encourage folks to call us if you are in this situation and you think you qualify, 764-3721, or you can email info at acap me.org for an appointment or to find out about appointment availabilities. And again, this the very end of the tax preparation season for our cash coalition uh, volunteers. And also one more thing of note before we get into our special feature topic of the um, diaper grant. This is another resource for families in Arusta County, specifically expectant moms or women of childbearing age considering having children. Uh, the Nurturing Healthy Pregnancies, Healthy Families, Healthy Communities program through Vitamin Angels, of which ACAP is a partner, are offering expecting parents and women of childbearing age free prenatal vitamins. Those are available. You can call us at 764-3721 or info at acap-me.org for more information. Or if you're stopping by one of our locations, ask about the Vitamin Angels program, again, offering free prenatal vitamins to women across Aroostook County. 
And lastly, if we've not talked about something here on this uh, new segment in uh, on ACAP today, and you are in need of services and assistance, please do consider, consider giving us a call here at 764-3721. We do have navigators who are available to help discuss with you what your needs might be and either connect you with programs and services here in the agency or others in partner organizations in the community as needed. Again, these navigators can help you learn about programs you might not know about and see what they can do to help find the assistance you need for what is challenging you at the time. Again, our ACAP navigators available at 764-3721. And that's the news and information that you can use for this, the second half of March, 2024. I'm so pleased now to welcome our guests. As I said at the top of the broadcast, we're going to be talking about the diaper demonstration project, which is happening across parts of the state of Maine and certainly happening right here in Aroostook County. We're gonna to talk to a couple of familiar faces and a new guest who are joining us now. First, Sue Powers, who many of you recognize in her role, her many roles here at ACAP over the years. Sue is now representing Maine Community Action Partnership uh, in this particular interview, uh, where she's leading the diaper demonstration program statewide uh, for the community action agencies and the collaborative. So Sue, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having us. This is an exciting and project. It is, and we're going to hear all about it in just a minute. We're excited to welcome in another partner working with you at the statewide level, and that's Margaret Maylander, who's with the Jewish Community Alliance Diaper Bank. Margaret, welcome to your first ACAP today, and really excited to learn about uh, what your community organization is doing to help make this possible across the state of Maine. So thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you, Jason. Excited to enjoy this conversation together. And then right here locally in Aroostook County, uh, many ACAP team members are going to be making this work happen and connecting diapers with families in need. And Rochelle Roy, certainly as the uh, overseer, if you will, of our Women, Infant and Children's program for a number of years, uh, certainly knows that there's a need out there. And we're pleased to welcome you back to the program, Rochelle, to talk about this very exciting project, which I know you've been very anxious to implement. Thank you, Jason. Yes, it certainly is a great project, and we are looking forward to this. All right, well, let's get our bearings grounded here on what the Diaper Demonstration Project is. And Sue, I'm going to turn to you for that, since you're sort of shepherding everyone across the state to get this brand new program uh, into effect real soon. So tell us all about it. Well, it's quite exciting, Jason. Um, back um, about two years ago, the uh, Federal Department of Health and Human Services established the Diaper Demonstration Distribution Research pilot um, project, and they have released funding for diaper distribution in three cohorts, and we are in cohort three. So that's fortunate because we have two other co cohorts of programs, community action programs and partners across the country who have already been working in the diaper demonstration project, and, and we are learning from them. Um, so we applied for the funding through Maine Community Action Partnership and four community action agencies across the state um, joined the pilot program along with a couple of community partners. Um, we were fortunate to be funded in cohort three. Um, it's a two year pilot project. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of work over the next couple of years. Um, to really determine what are the diaper needs in the state of Maine and um, what can we do to really build systems out across the state of Maine that will help um, get diapers to those who need them. Now, Margaret, I know that this is not new work to you, and that's part of the reason why the Jewish Community Alliance and specifically the Diaper Bank work that you lead uh, there was brought into this partnership. First of all, I guess, tell me a little bit about the Jewish Community Alliance Diaper Bank and what you will be doing in this project. Yes, thanks Thanks for having us, Jason. And um, the Jewish Community Alliance has been doing diaper distribution for many years, um, grew out of a very organic programming and having members in the community who saw a need um, and started building infrastructure around that. And over the years, you know, that need has grown and grown. And so we were excited when ACAP came to us um, as a community partner for this grant just to address the need at a larger scale than we were able to. Um, our work has mainly focused on the Portland, South Portland areas. Um, and so really looking at building out those systems and structures across the state so that we can really address the, 
bulk purchasing advantages um, for multiple locations and really, you know, make the distribution much further and wider than than the Portland area has been um, something that we are excited to be a part of. That's great. I'm going to come back to you in just a little bit and learn more about what that all entails in terms of getting that quantity of diapers into the state of Maine, since you certainly have the experience with that. But before we get to that, I want to turn to Rochelle Roy now and to hear from Rochelle about, I mean, as someone, Rochelle, who works uh, with families, with children who are who are diapered here in Aroostook County, uh, you certainly can attest to the need for a program like this uh, right here, not only in the county, but across the state of Maine as you work with your WIC colleagues statewide. Absolutely, Jason. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, I mean, we have families coming in every day asking for diapers. Um, so it's certainly something, I mean, that's a huge need. Plus, um, it takes that economic burden off the families, which, you know, our goal here is at yeah, ACAP is to empower families to not need us anymore. So this is, this is what we want. We want to be able to give them all the tools they need it's been a while since I've had a child in diapers, Rochelle, but it is a very expensive proposition. How do you know on average how much your family spend on diapers any given month? Um, that I don't know for a fact because it's been a little bit of a time um, <laughs> since I've had little ones in diapers, but I can tell you um, it is not cheap. And with the rising cost of things that, you know, everything that keeps going up and up and up, um, if this is what we can help with, it's huge because it not only helps, um, you know, with the economic burden, but it helps with the health and safety of these families, keeping, you know, keeping these babies out of the doctor's offices where they get exposed to more things. So it's certainly something, it's, it's certainly twofold. Now, Sue Power, statewide, this is going to be more about just putting diapers into the hands of families. There's more to this project. Talk about the, the plus diapers part of this project. Yes, that's um, that's right, Jason. And as Rochelle said, our um, our jobs are to work with families to establish systems within their families and networks within their families to be able to um, not need us anymore. Um, but for um, for now, um, what we will do with the diaper demonstration project is we will uh, um, work with families to. Um, access other services that they need. So the diaper distribution comes with wraparound services and the supports of wraparound services. So as a family comes into us with a diaper need, we will work with that family to assess other needs that they have and connect them with other, um, with other services. So it, it comes with those wraparound services. What I didn't know before this project and as the a couple of the others have mentioned already, it's been a while since I was purchasing diapers on a regular basis. Diapers are the fourth largest um, cost to a family. Um, so diapers fall right behind childcare, food and housing. Um, it's, it's a significant cost. It, it can range a family that's, um, that is, has one child in diapers. Um, it's about 80 to $90 a month. Um, for diapers and diapering supplies, so wipes and, and ointment and other things that may be needed um, for the diapering process. Um, and it, it encompasses um, a family that's, that's working on min at minimum wage right now. Um, diapers cost about 8% of their um, monthly income. So it's a huge expense to families and the, the project is designed to gather information um, if we are providing diapers or supplementing a family's diaper needs, what are they able to divert that funding that they would have been spending for diapers? What are they able to divert that to? Um, so it's, um, it's really a project um, that connects to so many pieces of a family's life. So if a child is not diapered um, and a child and, and a family cannot afford diapers, um, they can't send their child to childcare because when you go to childcare, you have to take diapers with you for the, for the child during the day. If the child can't go to childcare, the parent can't go to work or to school. And so eventually it becomes an economic. Um, a, a community economic um, impact. So 
who knew that diapers um, were so very important to a community's economic development? Certainly are, and Margaret, I'm guessing that you certainly have your fingers on the pulse of that because of the families that you've served over the years through the Jewish Community Alliance Diaper Bank. But there must be a lot of logistics behind this in terms of, I mean, because diapers, I remember buying them, they come in pretty big boxes if you're buying, you know, enough to make it economical and the like. So moving that volume of diapers around the state of Maine uh, must be a feat in and of itself. Uh, tell me about the logistics. Yes. Um... We are, are working behind the scenes to really build um, an infrastructure that allows the state to use its purchasing powers to drive down the per unit expense. Um, and then working with a distributor then to be able to hit many different locations throughout the state as well. So making sure that, um, yeah, they're going directly to different hubs throughout the state where they can then be distributed through four different ACAP organizations with this grant and um, two other community partner organizations that are doing um, the on the ground distribution. And as Sue was saying, a really big um, important component of this project is making sure that the diaper distribution is very well embedded within wraparound services. So making sure that it's leading to family self-sufficiency planning um, in that process. So we are working um, with each organization to figure out storage capacity, um, how often they can re receive diapers, um, doing projections on diaper sizes, uh, and, and doing data collection for the pilot project as well to make sure that we're, um, over the course of the next two years, receiving as rich of data as possible so that we can have a good understanding of the diaper needs throughout the state um, and be able to paint an accurate picture of what that need is um, and how diapers are affecting our community, as Sue was saying, through school needs, through school readiness, um, daycare needs, um, and just supporting parents in the, in the process of being able to keep their children dry um, is really you know, something that, that we all hope to achieve together. Can you talk a little bit to the the difference made in the community that you've been serving um, over the years through this project? What are your parents who are receiving uh, diapers saying to you, and what are you what are you realizing as a result of of the initial success of your program? Yes, we um, are a supplemental diaper bank as well. So we provide um, you know twenty five diapers per child per um, month, and so that really just allows parents to kind of have some of that economic burden lifted off um, of their plate, but we definitely are seeing an increase in that need. Um, so wanting to build out the infrastructure and, and put funding into place that really enhances that um, over time. Now, Rochelle, we've talked about, and Sue's talked about the wraparound services that come in addition to the diapers. Talk about how families can enroll in this program, what the expectation is of families and, and, and what they can expect to experience through uh, this diaper uh, demonstration project grant. So for this pilot program, what we're going to be doing is taking on hundred families. Um, so what they will do is they will, they will apply to enroll, to enroll in the project. And then we will go ahead that, that will be through our, our ACAP, um, you know, for front end staff and, Certainly that will happen also online. Um, but then what will happen is once they come in, they will sit with our navigator. Our navigator will go through um, a survey with them, just seeing how things are going for them, what kind of needs they have, go through everything that they have. And this is something that they have to agree to participate in. Um, so at that point, we'll go, they'll go through that and then they will enroll. Um, they will receive you know, whether they need information on workforce, whether they, you know, haven't taken an advantage of the WIC program and they want to be part of that, they, whether they need child care or early care and education, all these things are going, we're going to wrap our arms around them and help empower them to be everything they can be and to get them to that point. We want them to be aware of everything that's out there that can help, help them. 
Now, Sue, that economic mobility is a critical component of it. Social and economic mobility is what we do uh, in terms of working with families in particular here at ACAP. What have you heard about, um, you, you mentioned, I think this is the second or third round that Maine is a part of. What have you heard from some of our forerunners or who were in some of the earlier cohorts, cohort, cohorts I should say, of this um, and what their uh, initial results might have been? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we do attend cohort meetings and we're able to share those learnings, which has been really helpful. Um, some of the things that we have learned is that um, after families have had a few months of diaper distribution, that they do feel like they've been supported um, with both diapers and wraparound services that they're able to manage on their own. So um, families sometimes are on the program for a very short period of time, and that will allow other, pro other families to um, come on as, as families go off. Um, unfortunately, we do have limited funding. So um, as Rochelle mentioned, um, each of the partners across the state will have um, access to diapers for 100 children. So we will be able to um, enroll those children. And as children come off, as families um, are able to um, manage on their own, then they will come off and new children will come on. Um, so th the... Um, the diaper distributions will happen on a monthly basis um, with the, the first month that a family enters being probably the longest appointment that they will have because through that appointment, they will enroll in the federal demonstration project um, and they'll be assigned a unique identifier number. And that number is what will be used um, for all information that is shared um, between our project in Maine and the federal project. Um, so there are, there's no um, identifying information that's exchanged. It's, it's all through that, that identifier number. Um, and then from, um, from that point, um, months two through five will be um, simply a check-in with a navigator to see how families are doing. Um, month six will be um, an assessment again with a navigator of how are you doing? Um, what else do you need? Um, and there will be a, um, a more formal assessment. Um, so families will be meeting with navigators um, throughout, the, throughout the process on a monthly basis. Um, and it, each of those monthly visits will receive um, their distribution for the month of 125 diapers per child. Okay, so Margaret, talk about the science behind that. Diapers for 100 children um, in Aroostook County, uh, 100 families. Um, how do you figure the factoring of the size? You had talked about that. You alluded to it a little bit earlier. Is it based upon who enrolls and what the projections are, or is it a best guess? How does how does that how does that all happen? <laughs> Yes, well, we are using a two-pronged approach. Um, our distributor has historical data that we're working off of um, for the sizes that they supply um, for other states in this pilot project. And then we're also working, we have a couple community partners who have collected data on the front end um, and done um, assessment of what sizes they will need. So we'll be using um, percentages um, in the middle of that to build out our first order and then do more close tracking um, once the project gets up and running to then do uh, more accurate uh, buying of the sizes that will be needed given the children that are enrolled in the program. So um, working on building out those systems to make sure that we're maximizing storage capacity and able to meet the needs uh, as we know uh, children grow quickly and, and sizes fluctuate. So trying to stay on top of that and doing as much learning as we can as a state um, to be able to meet that need. And it is, you mentioned, it's a sort of a bulk purchase buy. So I mean, what does this look like when it, ro when it rolls into Aroostook County? This is a tractor trailer load of diapers? What, how, how does that work? Yes, um, for our initial order, we're hoping that it'll be about a half of a tractor trailer um, delivered to Aroostook County. Um, and, and a lot of that is just based on um, having a large storage unit there and being able to, to hold that 
capacity, which some of our other community partners are not able to. So um, that is definitely a huge advantage. And then having you know, the, the capacity to unload quickly and and have the infrastructure for that um, is also advantageous. So we're excited to get a lot of diapers up to that part of the state um, and to get the program off the ground um, so that they are getting distributed within the community. Very exciting. Rochelle, um, talk about what your hopes and dreams are for this program here at, here at ACAP and how, we, how it helps families that we're working with each and every day. I, I just think it's fantastic. I'm I'm really hoping that, you know, this being our first year, we start with 100 and then maybe we'll get to expand. Um, but of course, we got to start a little smaller to make sure this all, everything comes together. But this is going to be huge for our families. I, I can't stress the, I mean, the economic um, stress that our families are going through. Um, I mean, families working two jobs and still can't do it in the rising cost of everything. This is going to be so amazing for our families. And I, I'm just so excited about it because it's not something that, you know, they would come in and yeah, if we had them, we give them to them. This is something that they're going to be able to enroll in and count on. And um, it's going to be huge for our communities. Awesome. So it's a, it's a big project and a lot of logistics and details that uh, are all being worked through. Um, let's just do a, sort of one more tour around here and get any last thoughts that you may have, anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to make sure our community understood if they're watching this broadcast. And I'm going to start with you, Sue. So um, there's so much um, to talk about. Um, one thing that I think is important is that um, the the project is um, part of our community services block grant eligibility through Maine Community Partnership, Action Partnership, and which means that families um, are eligible. It, it, the target is for um, families that are within 200% of poverty. Um, that that um, is, is a, a higher um, a higher percentage, so many families will be eligible. Um, we're excited about that. Um, we're also, um, Margaret and I have been working with the state through the Help Me Grow program, and we're currently developing a map of diaper distribution programs across the state. Um, and as part of that, um, this little project will be able to really support um, service providers in helping families um, know where to go to access diapers um, wherever they live in the state of Maine. So that's kind of a fun and um, a project that really will have um, a long lasting impact, we're hoping. Yeah, I think thank you for noting the earlier part of that, Sue, because I think that's important to note. So if a family, for example, you know, it was previously deemed ineligible for Head Start that has 100% of the poverty guidelines. So 200% of the federal poverty guidelines is considerably more than that. So don't be discouraged if you've applied for an ACAP program before and haven't been income eligible because this has a much higher threshold. Rochelle, is, uh, what's the WIC um, for, just as an example, what's the WIC federal poverty guidelines uh, eligibility? The WIC uh, poverty guidelines are at uh, 185%. So it's even above WIC. So, which is amazing because it's going to help those families that a lot of times don't qualify for anything. And any even above HEAP, which is which is also good. So if you've been turned down in the past because of, of too high an income, certainly want to encourage you to give us a call on this particular program if you have young children in diapers and could benefit. Margaret, your last thoughts and, and anything that we didn't you didn't share that you wanted to make sure folks in Aroostook County or statewide knew about the about your work and your connection with this program. Definitely. We're just um, appreciative to be a partner in it. Um, my last thought would be to also clue people in um, the fact that we've been a part of the National Diaper Bank Network um, for many years. And so uh, that's the, the network that has done a lot of the advocacy and legislative work um, to bring about this funding. And so we continue to utilize their resources and to be plugged in um, so that we can continue that conversation on a national level as well. So another great resource for people to be aware of um, that's happening on a very large scale. 
Well, our thanks to you certainly for, for expanding the work that you do in Southern Maine, loaning us your expertise for this project and your willingness to help uh, folks all the way up here in Aroostook County um, with, with that expertise, that knowledge and, and our ability to connect families. So thank you and, uh, and to the uh, Jewish Community Alliance Diaper Bank for being such uh, great partners uh, with us on this project. And Rochelle Roy, the last word, I'm gonna let it be yours in terms of anything that you have wanted to make sure folks knew. And, and then I'll come back and ask how folks can get connected with this program if they're interested. Um, I guess the big piece is I just to remind families that um, this is truly voluntary, um, but when you do sign up or apply, that means that you're applying to be part of our pilot program. And, um, it's a good program and I mean, there's so many benefits to come from it. So I, I just want to encourage them to reach out if, even if you think you don't qualify. And what is the best way to do that, Rochelle, if you're listening to this and, and wanna uh, consider signing your household up for this uh, demonstration project? The, the best way will be either to uh, call our ACAP office with the number on the screen. Um, we're also looking into putting something on the website to be able to um, fill out a quick application and get that taken care of. Um, and then they'll be contacted by a navigator. And again, Sue, just one last, uh, the, we're expecting a spring uh, startup on this project. We are expecting an April startup. Um, we are, are working right now to get um, staff trained on the data system that's going to collect all of the data that we need for our reporting purposes. Um, and once we get um, staff trained and diapers delivered, um, we'll be looking at distributing and we expect that will be um, the beginning to mid April. That's amazing. I'm so anxious to see this program get off the ground. Uh, thank you to Sue Powers, Margaret Maylander, uh, and Rochelle Roy for being our guests on this uh, this second half of March edition of ACAP today on the eve of the launch, if you will, of the Diaper Demonstration Project grant uh, here in Aroostook County. And hopefully we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll get those 100 families and get them in quickly because as we've pointed out, our guests have pointed out, diapers are such a critically important part and something we don't always think of and the percentage of a household's budget uh, devoted to diapers. If you have children, you certainly can feel that. Um, so we look forward to working with many families in Aroostook County on this project. Before we let our guests go and before we say goodbye to you, uh, we're first going to uh, turn as we usually do at this point in the broadcast to our highlight snapshot. Again, this is the highlight snapshot for our second half of March, 2024. And it takes us to one of our community partner organizations that's under the willow tree, which is part of the Wintergreen Arts Center, and our own ACAP community educator, Kelly Edgecombe, who specializes in oral health, uh, visited with the boys and girls at Under the Willow Tree, again, that preschool program at Wintergreen Arts Center, where she talked to students about the importance of brushing and caring for their teeth. Kelly also read to the children and uh, they practiced some of what they learned on their furry friends that you can see there. All smiles and all pretty smiles there, as you can see, um, as they're learning about the importance of good oral health from our own uh, community educator, Kelly Edgecombe. We thank them and we thank all of you. We especially thank our guests for joining us on this edition of ACAP today. We'll be back in the first half of April with a brand new edition and we'll see you all then. Thanks. <laughs>